more senators voted for this with the TikTok additive than <laughs> did with just the funding for our allies than the bill that passed in February. What does that tell us? Well, it tells me, and it should tell the rest of Washington, that they are sensing the urgency of the moment. They're looking at the situation across the Atlantic and Ukraine with increased concern. And they're realizing that if they don't act now, it may at some point become too late. Mm. And they really want to make sure that they are getting ahead of, uh, getting ahead of whatever may, uh, may await uh, Ukraine and the government in Kiev. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it seems that the House Speaker, Mike Johnson, also finally understood potentially the gravity of the situation, or at least that's what he signaled when he had seen intelligence is what pushed him to finally get this across the House. But we know he potentially could face consequence for that in terms of a motion to vacate that could be brought by Marjorie Taylor Greene. Interestingly, though, former President Trump reiterated his support for Speaker Johnson yesterday on a radio show. This is what he said. We have a majority of one, <laughs> OK? So it's not like he can go and do whatever he wants to do. I think he's a very good person. It's a tough situation when you have one. I think he's a, a very good man. I think he's uh, trying very hard. And again, we've got to have a big election. We've got to elect some people in Congress much more than we have right now. So, Mike, does it seem the former president is going to save the current speaker? Well, he is sending a signal to the people who might uh, wish harm upon Mike Johnson in, uh, in the House right now that it might not be such a good idea to go through the same exercise they went through at some political cost last year. You'll remember the same procedure. The motion to vacate was used to oust Johnson's predecessor, Kevin McCarthy. And Johnson had struggled for months since taking over, taking the speaker's gavel. And he was really dealing with this restive group of hardliners led by Marjorie Taylor Greene, who at any moment's notice signaled they could pull the trigger on him, too, with the same motion to vacate. By letting them know that it might not be in their best interest, Trump is also letting the public know that, hey, the last thing we need heading into the election is another speaker fight that could reflect poorly on the Republican Party. All right, Bloomberg's Michael Shepard, thank you so much, as always, for joining us this evening. And speaking of former President Trump, he, of course, is still trying to campaign for a second term in the White House, but he spent most of his day in a courtroom in New York. Here was his response earlier as the court held a hearing about whether he violated a gag order preventing him from disparaging witnesses. We have a gag order which to me is totally unconstitutional. I'm not allowed to talk, but people are allowed to talk about me. So they can talk about me, they can say whatever they want, they can lie, but I'm not allowed to say anything. I'd love to say everything that's on my mind, but I'm restricted because I have a gag order. For more, we go now to our Texas Bureau Chief, Julie Fine, joining us from Dallas tonight. So, Julie, we didn't actually get a decision from the judge as to whether or not he's going to hold uh, Donald Trump in contempt of court for violating this gag order. But we also do see on display a former president that seems to be a bit frustrated with the lack of control he has in this situation. Oh, you can absolutely tell as he sits in the courtroom. And he had to be pretty frustrated today when the judge said to his attorneys, you're losing all credibility with the court when they were discussing this gag order, asking for specific examples. This is very difficult for him. Obviously, he has to sit there. He has to sit through this entire trial. He cannot be on the campaign trail during the days when all of this is going on. And you look at some of the things that have been said about Michael Cohen, his former attorney, the former president, basically saying that he had nothing to do with the fact that Michael Cohen ended up going to jail. So clearly he is very frustrated with this process as he waits to see if the judge decides he violated these gag, this gag order. Well, I'll tell you what, the contrast is remarkable. Julie, we hear so much about the split screen as Donald Trump is locked up in the courtroom. Joe Biden is, in contrast, looks like he's on a road trip movie. Today he got his way to Florida, is in Tampa, in fact, and speaking specifically about the, the matter of abortion ahead of the state implementing the six-week abortion ban that made such headlines uh, when it was first passed. Take a listen to what he told organizers there. I think Florida's in play nationally. There's some animating issues, obviously. Choice is one of them. Choice is one of them. Julie, obviously, he's got a real message to send, but Florida, is this 
uh, an opportunity to make news or to actually win electoral votes? Well, I think at this point, it's certainly an opportunity to make news. I mean, he is in a state right now that that a presidential candidate has not won in years. So obviously he is going there and he's doing this again, like you just referred to, with a split screen of the former president sitting in a courtroom. And then he starts talking about an issue that is clearly a winner with Democrats. He talks about abortion. You've seen it, Joe, in blue states and red states and purple states how that has fared when it's been on the ballot. So this gives him a good opportunity to say, hey, I think this is in play, or at least portray that while talking about an issue that he knows is a winner with some of his voters.